today we're going to do some metal polishing and I'm going to be polishing this. It's just a piece of aluminum that we do for the uh, chief's mess or going away presents. And we put these in a wooden plaque that is shaped like Alabama. It looks really good. We put a patch down here. That's the base patch. And then we put our flight suit patch over here with their name on it. They look really good. I'll try to get a, uh, a picture of one that's complete somewhere in this, this stream. So this is what we're using today. This is my Flex Compact. It's a mini rotary. We use this to sand. And you can see I use this little interface pad right here. And I have to actually wet sand this down to get all these scratches out. You can see how nasty that is. And that's from the lathe machine. I have a buddy that does these with a lathe at work. So we'll get those scratches out. And then I'll eventually go up with all these different sandpapers. And then I'll finish it out with some Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Let me see here. Looks like we got everything we need. Got some pads. Got a few pads over here. This is my dirty one. These are just old pads that I never really use, so it's perfect for metal polishing. But uh, let's go ahead and step into this. I'm going to put this in the tripod. Flip this around. And we'll put this down. Hopefully that comes up pretty good. This is the first sandpaper I'm going to use. I think this is a 120 grit, which is pretty gnarly. But to get these gouges out of here, that's, that's really what you kind of need. Because this is really bad. And I tried doing it with uh, less sandpaper, you know, like 320, 500. And it took forever. This really makes short work of this kind of stuff. So I'll stick this on my little interface pad. Of course we're wet sanding, so we just got a bottle of water. And uh, let me put a towel over this real quick. I got all my bottles and stuff over here. I don't really want those getting too nasty. Make sure that's lined up good. Looks pretty good. Got my pad wet. I'll start up over in this corner here. After you sand for a little while, you got to spray it to get all the metal residue off. So you can see we're starting to get some, some of the deeper stuff out. This is probably the worst of it right here. This might take a minute to do. First key with uh, doing a rotary, you want to try to keep it as level as possible or it will tend to walk on you. A rotary is turning into a, a lost art for a lot of people because there's, there's way better technology out there, especially for doing cars or something like this where I really need to make short work of this. I mean, I can't even hardly feel that scratch now. You can see it's, it's a lot different. And that was just one quick pass. So we're going to do several passes on this, get all this deep stuff out. You can't do this stuff with a uh, with a dual action nearly as fast. Woo! There we go. That's what I was talking about for walking. They definitely want to walk on you from time to time. It always wants to hit these little grooves here. I always have trouble with that. I've done about nine of these. You see my, my sandpaper gets a little beat up. 
Well, I got plenty of these. I got plenty of interface pads. Most time is just trying to spray these off and keep keep the work area clean. The cleaner it is, the easier it is to get this stuff out. They're getting there. That that spot right there is pretty much out. You can see all through the uh, tail rotor finistron area how how that's starting to uh, that's going to be difficult to do. So let me work my way over that way. Let me go ahead and change this pad out because it's, you can see that's already starting to get pretty gnarly. I got plenty of these. So I'll change that out. This metal's rough on these pads. Let me see. Where? Oh, up here. So got a fresh pad on here. Go ahead and knock this off. You see, starting to come along. This is just real rough sanding right now. Just trying to get all this nasty stuff out of here. Oh yeah, that fresh pad's really cutting. I can feel it. This aluminum tears these pads up so fast. Yeah, this pad's already starting to tear up. It's just tough around that, uh, around these tail blades. That makes it really difficult to get to. See, I'm just, just spraying the water, holding it at an angle like that, trying to get all the runoff. A lot of that's out. This is the worst spot right here. All these, where the tail blades are, that's where it's, uh, you can see my pads are really, it's really rough on them. So I may not get a whole lot of use out of this while I'm trying to get these tail blades out. Woo, there it goes. And that's part of the reason why I use an interface pad also. I'd much rather tear up this aluminum or this, uh, this foam interface pad that I have on there than my actual good backing plate. These backing plates are pretty pricey at like 40 bucks. I get a whole package of these, these foam interface pads for like $10. Let me go ahead and change this pad out again because it's already beat up. I'm going through these suckers pretty fast. Luckily, I, I've got quite a few of these. Let me throw this on there. And then let me go ahead and get this runoff done. You can see all that aluminum coming off of there. It's definitely starting to shine up a little bit. Of course, that's nowhere near where we're going to be at. I want this sucker to be a mirror. I'm going to start over in this corner, start working on this area here. See that, that deep groove runs all the way through here. And then maybe I'll start hitting these, these blades towards the end so I can quit going through my uh, sandpaper so fast. I don't have my sandpaper exactly even. Well, you want to center that up as much as possible. That, that way it's not doing that little wiggle action to you. I don't know if you can see that and how it goes. So close to center as possible. It's always best. Well, I can't get this little, there we go. all that aluminum that's coming off of there. Really mucks up my, my garage floor, but uh, I can always mop it, get it off of there. 
Oh, that sucker is deep. I mean, I can catch my nail in that. Luckily, these letters are nice and deep, so I won't interfere with them too much. I've got my chat up, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. I may not see it right away, but I'll definitely answer any questions you have. That's kind of the reason I like this format, is that I'm able to do stuff live. And like I was saying in my last live stream, uh, this might be something I can offer to my customers, that I can put set up a camera like this, and they can actually see their car being detailed in real time and see how detailed I actually get with it. And if there's something they have a question about in real time, you know, they can ask me about it. And I think that's a, a good benefit to have for a detailing business. You know, it's a luxury service. So if you can offer that kind of service, that's, that's great. Ooh, it's hard to do this one-handed. Coming along. I just don't want the metal to overheat. One of the good things about wet sanding is the metal won't get too hot. With aluminum, if it gets hot, it starts bubbling up, and that, that actually is an issue. So this isn't too bad. The water definitely helps with cooling. coming out that sucker there man that is that is deep deep so that's going to take a minute but you know that's just you got to be patient when you're doing metal a wet sanding part anyway metal's not quite as pliable as say clear coat I know most people watch these YouTube videos and within a series of about 15 minutes of uh, cut shots, you get a finished product. And I always like to teach, you know, I like to teach things like when I do these videos, little tips or tricks. And sometimes that's hard to do in a 15 minute clip. So, I mean, these are, these are going to be longer videos, obviously. And I don't expect everybody to stick around for the whole video. But when it becomes just a regular video that you can click on and you can fast forward through the stuff that you want to see, that makes it easy. And I actually might be able to put uh, little thumbnails in here to section it off. I'm still playing around with this concept. But if you guys have any experience with this, just let me know. Anything can help me out, that'd be great. I actually got this on the low setting, number one, and it's pretty fast. I, I can't remember what the low setting for this sucker is, RPM-wise. This thing's covered in metal. It's kind of hard to see. But uh, I know they do that for cooling with these little flex compacts. they got to be going pretty fast in order to cool them. It's not the greatest design. I, you know, I've, I've got a couple flex machines, but I'm not a huge fan. Every, every single one of them I've had some issues with. Um, the first one is, you know, my flex, my big uh, variable speed, BGR, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the, the forced action uh, DA that I have. And it, it's a popular machine. It's been around for a long time. I think I've had it for over 20 years. And the cord on that one actually went bad on me. It's one of those 25 foot uh, HD cords. And I had to cut off a big portion of it at the top of the machine. I should have made a video out of this and take that part out because it was shortened out and readjust it. I mean, it was just a little electrical job, but it was kind of interesting.
I guess I shouldn't complain because I have had that machine for 15 years. It was probably the second polisher I ever bought. I own like five or six now. And it's it's made me a lot of money. It's probably worthy of a of a 10 year review. This machine that I'm working with now is just a little mini rotary. I tried doing these at first with a drill and that just wore me out doing this number like that. So I decided to use my little mini rotary and it, it does really good. It's pretty powerful. The problem I've had with this machine is here in my garage, it gets 100 degrees. You can see it's kind of slick right there. There's an O-ring inside of here that holds grease in the gearbox and that O-ring shrunk up or something and it, it started dripping grease down through here. And I had to replace that O-ring and it's, I still don't think that it's perfect. It was hard to find like a actual flex O-ring. They're not really easy to find online. This is a German machine, of course. That sucker is still super deep in there. It might almost be time to change out this pad. Get a little bit more bite. So I'm not here all day working on one scratch. Once I do this initial correction, once I get these initial scratches out, it goes a lot faster going through the grits of sandpaper. This is pretty much the same process I use for headlights. Let me hit it one more time with this sandpaper. Make sure it's not hot. key when you're using a rotary is you, you want to stay on top of it. Of course, you want to use two hands, but I, I don't have a good clamp system here. I'm just putting this on a bucket with a towel. But uh, you want to stay on top of it. That way you have the best chance of actually keeping that pad level. I don't hardly ever use a rotary on a car. That's, that's, to me, it's a no-no. You don't want to use a rotary on a car. But uh, something like this, this is perfect for a boat, a gel coat. Yeah, I'll probably use a rotary for that too. So I'm gonna change this pad out. Let me go ahead and get the aluminum off of this sucker. It's not a bad day out in the old garage. 95 degrees, 57% humidity. Just another regular day in Mobile, unfortunately. I've been wanting to do a lot of projects out here and I just I can't bring myself to actually come out in the garage and work because it's so damn hot. But uh, yeah, I've, I've actually quit detailing. I don't know when I'm gonna reopen. It's gotta get below 90 for sure. See that fresh pad, that really cuts really well. Get a lot of that metal off of there. Like I said, this is pretty much the same process that I use for headlights. I, uh, I put an acrylic cover. When I do headlights, I guarantee my headlights for a year. And that's because I put an acrylic seal on them. And I tried doing that with a, a practice one. And it actually turned out really good. You can see where I, I shined it up. I didn't go too crazy shining it. And then I put that acrylic seal on there and it, it, it's really good on there. It looks good. But then when I tried it with one of these that was actually all cut up and had the rough edges on it, it kept tearing my applicator. So I kept getting these little little fibers in the, in the sealant and I could not fix that. And once this stuff dries, you know, that stuff's stuck in there. 
So unfortunately, when I do these, I got to leave the metal untreated. So I tell everybody who gets one of these that if you need to touch it up, just grab some mothers and carefully go around it because that mothers will actually get into these grooves. I use a pressure washer to blast it out of these grooves and it still doesn't come all the way out. But we'll go over that when I get to that part. I am blowing this stuff all over the place. So I'm actually going to put an apron on just so I don't get as nasty. And like I said, if anybody has any questions at all, please just let me know. I mean, this is a pretty straightforward process. Anybody with the proper tools can probably do this. I don't know if it's really a skill or anything, but you can get really good results any kind of metal you're trying to polish. I've done stuff like this with Dremels for like smaller things. I need to get some more water here pretty soon. I've almost got it. It's, it's not a lot left there. This was the worst one out of all we've done. Like I said, I think I finished about eight of these and I put this one off because the scratches were so bad and they were so deep. I was kind of hoping we were done with these for the year, but uh, we had one more chief. I guess I should say former chief. He actually got promoted to warrant officer. But he's a good dude and he's been working with us for a while and I wanted to make sure he got something to show that we appreciated him. Let me see here. Yeah, you can see that's, that's starting to come out there. I don't know if you remember what it looked like before, but that sucker was deep. So we've taken quite a bit of metal off of this. My, my concern is this spot's going to be a lot lower going across here where the scratch was than the rest of it. So that might look a little funny when it gets real shiny. You can see every little imperfection. That's not getting it's starting to warm up a little bit, especially around them corners. That's where you got to be careful with metal or with paint, anything that's uh, curved, got a corner on it. That's where you can run into trouble. I might need to fill my water bottle up soon. That's uh, there's a little bit left there, a little bit left right on the very edge. And we're probably done there. I still got to do all the way across here. It's a little bit still inside the uh, blades. That might have knocked her out there. That might be it, at least for that little spot. I 
I don't really, I could see a faint line right there, but I doubt the camera can even pick it up in this 720 stream. And this is, you know, my eyes looking at it, which I seem to pick up things that really most people don't see just because I'm into detailing and it's something I look for. I'm going to hit it one more time and I'll start working this way. That has got to have gotten it. I can't imagine there's much more left on that spot. I feel like I've taken a few millimeters of metal off there. Well, it's, it's there. I mean, it's, that sucker is faint, super faint. But I actually have a lot more sanding to do on this, uh, going through the sandpaper. So I might uh, leave that for now and start working this way up towards that. I don't know. Maybe I should hit that one more time. Yeah, I'm going to hit that one more time with the big sandpaper. It's just how I am. I got to fill my water bottle up. So just give me a second. Got that filled up. I miss Hawaii, and Hawaii actually had a sink in my garage, and now I gotta use a water hose like an animal. Hit the sandpaper. That might be it for this one. Yeah, it's rough. I can feel it. Hit that edge, just like I was talking about earlier. So that one's done. No good. I mean, if it's there, I, I can barely detect it. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in that. This is the one we want to go after now. This one I started earlier, and it was beating my sandpaper up real good being next to these blades. So let me hit this one up next. Fresh piece of sandpaper. It's not thing about these flexes. I mean, this thing is hot. And I, I don't really feel like this is heavy use. Looks like I got a lot of good metal off that time. You see, this is just, uh, it's time consuming. It definitely takes time to do this. But hopefully once we get this initial sanding done, well, it's right there, all the way up through there. And this is the worst one. So I, I was kind of putting this one off just because I knew it was gonna take some time. I'm glad I was able to procure some of this, this real good rough sandpaper. I think it's 120 grit. I'm 
not really adding any pressure to this. I mean, the weight of the machine's enough. Um, if I see that I'm not getting the right level there, you, you can feel it. It tries to walk on you. If you get too far ahead or too far back, you can kind of feel it. And that just comes with experience to know how to adjust the machine to keep it from walking around on you. I used to have an old practice hood when I was in Detroit. And uh, you may have seen one of my videos, terrible paint polishing. But I would take some of my students down there and, and let them try out the rotary on that practice hood. And that was always a good show because I'd, I'd give them the big monster DeWalt that I have and put them on there and you just see them go, woo! The machine would try to rip out of their hands. And it's just, you know, it's just something that takes time and practice to learn how to use a rotary. Having a smaller pad is, is way easier. You know, you put a, a five inch pad on a rotary and that, that's a whole different monster. I've seen people using 12 inch uh, wool pads. I mean, that's, that's really difficult to actually keep up with. We're getting there. I think we're getting there. Wet sanding really makes it easier just because you know your medium's not going to get too hot. That's a little bit, a little bit right through there. This seems to be coming out a little bit faster than that side did. Maybe it wasn't quite as deep. That side was really gouged out. And I, I guess when the lathe was cutting this stuff out, the little metal shavings, we, we, they put oil on there so it doesn't get too hot when they're cutting it. And I think the oil was capturing the little metal shavings. And when the tip would drag across to start working on another part, it would drag that metal shaving over and just make a big mess. So it doesn't get too hot when they're cutting it. And I think the oil was capturing the little metal shavings. And when the tip Hopefully my audio is picking up pretty good. I'm, I'm using a Bluetooth mic. I'm trying to listen to it on my iPad to, to see if it sounds okay. If I was smart, I would have put in some, uh, some little Bluetooth uh, earbuds so I could hear it better. But I think that echo would have thrown me off. This is something I can practice doing. Oh yeah, that's coming out pretty good. getting there. That only takes some time. Hope everybody's Saturday's going good. Always love Saturdays. Get to sleep in, watch a little TV, play some video games, jump on YouTube, make a video. Nothing wrong with that. That's a good day. Got to talk to my dad for a little while. He's doing some yard sailing.
get in there. Only thing I don't like about this uh, format of making videos is that I can't really play any music. I usually like to have music in the background when I'm working in the garage or doing detailing of some sort. But uh, YouTube's got pretty strict rules against that kind of stuff. So is Twitch for that matter. So I got to kind of just listen to the soothing sounds of my voice. Hopefully that's enough. See all that metal coming off of there. I think my poor little polisher is permanently discolored now from doing so many of these finish drawings. I'm gonna turn one little fan on over here, give me a little more airflow. Hopefully it's not too loud. Oh, it might be too. Let me turn a little low. Just need a little bit of airflow going over here. It's a 90, 95 degree day, creeping up on 96 according to my little thermostat. Well, I don't know, what do y'all think? I don't really see a line there anymore. I'm gonna hit this up here a little bit. This looks like it's good. I think we got the majority of that stuff out. I don't, I don't see anything. I'm gonna hit this area here. And then we'll move up here, hit this one more time, and we'll change out sandpapers, go to a different grip. Looking good, it's looking good. Got that roughed in real nice. I'm gonna hit this, this anchor area one more time with the good rough stuff. And I'll clean this up real good. And then we're going 120 for the initial. So I'm thinking maybe uh, 500, we'll jump up to 500 next. And get some of these real rough scratches out. It shouldn't take more than a pass or two. Trying to keep that sandpaper as level as possible. The aluminum's a whole lot more forgiving than, if, say, if I was wet sanding a car. So I can be a, a lot more aggressive with it. I think that's pretty good. I think that looks really good. I don't see any obvious defects. I'm trying to catch it in the light there. Nothing too obvious. All right, we'll switch it up. We'll go 500 grit next. One good thing about streaming this entire process is I can see how long it takes me to do one of these. I think my average is about two hours. Of course, I don't expect anybody sticking around from start to finish on that. But uh, I think that new sandpaper makes this a lot faster because before I was using 500 grit or 320 as my uh, rough end and it took forever for a scratch like that. 
that would have been a whole day, and then I would have worked on the rest of it on another day. This one's actually got a good little scratch up there, right under the M. So let me work on that. This sandpaper is it's not quite as good as that stuff with the holes in it. You can see it gets gummed up really fast. The stuff with the holes in it, those holes kind of whisk that nasty stuff away. It's actually made to do wet sanding. That A's kind of messed up on this one, but that's all right. I'm gonna hit this corner really good because it looks like it's uh, a little jacked up. Let me switch out to the other sandpaper real fast. Just to try to knock it out a little quicker. Cause I didn't notice that earlier. And it's definitely deep enough to where I don't wanna waste a lot of time on it. Yeah, that A and that M's a little messed up. But it's something, you know. I can't go too crazy with this or I'll actually, or that A and that M isn't very deep, I'll end up losing the daggone A and the M. So that's a concern. I got a second one that I could work on, but this one, there's no stars in the anchor. So I'd rather have the stars and just, I mean, you see the ATC mobile looks a lot better, but then the anchor doesn't look as good. And to me, the anchor's kind of the focal point of the whole thing. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with this one. So let me switch out 500 grit. I got to be careful around that A and that M or the, you're not even going to be able to see that it says ATC Mobile on it. So I'm just going to hit it pretty fast and move on. And all I'm doing here I'm not really trying to take imperfections out. I'm just trying to get it down to where the entire thing's level at 500 grit. And that's the, that's the whole process of it. You know, that the initial one's the one where you're actually taking all the imperfections out. You want to use your, your grittiest sandpaper to take those imperfections out. And then you just want to refine it from there. So, you know, I'll go 500 and from 500, I'll probably jump it up to a thousand. I mean, you can do that. coming up pretty good. I should be able to just use this one strip of sandpaper for this since I'm just going over it one time though. When I get up into the uh, 2000 type range I might need a couple passes just to make it an easier polish job towards the end. But at this range I'm, I'm literally just going to go one pass. Blades are catching me again. All 
All right. From there, I want to go a thousand. I'm gonna clean it up real good. See what we're working with here. I mean, that that looks pretty good. I've actually seen some people give away the gifts where they're they're just gritty like this, and I kind of push that for a little bit, just for the fact that the uh, the people who get these awards won't have to worry about touching them up from time to time because this this bare metal it's definitely going to start getting a little worse over time. But man, those shiny ones they just look so good, and everybody wanted the shiny ones, so that's what I went with. All right, so I'm switching out my sandpaper. I'm going to change it to 1,000 grit. Let me find where that is. I got several of these little baggies of sandpaper that I need to look through. I believe that's 1,000. Yeah, 1,000 grit. Place that on there. You get a drink of water real fast. It is hot, hot, hot. Ah, uh, refreshing. All right. It's this hot. I can't even have a beer out here while I'm working. Just dehydrate me. You can see I'm just knocking down all those sanding marks from the 500 grit that we just used. I'm trying to get it at a nice uniform 1000 grit. It's pretty, pretty simple, pretty simple process, you know. It's just like I said, it's time consuming, especially in the beginning when you're trying to get all those scratches out. And you can see how much shinier as we go down. This is all the 500 grit here, and that's all the, the 1000 grit. Hopefully that picks it up. I'm not sure if the camera does, does it justice. Oh yeah, I can see it now. Even at 720, you can tell a the difference there. Let me start on this side. I had a, quite a few people ask me how I do these at work. So I posted this link on not only my business Facebook page, but my personal Facebook page. And hopefully if those guys that had questions, they saw the advertisement. Because YouTube actually lets you advertise a video, which is a really nice feature. I don't even think Twitch lets you do that. But the advertisement I was able to put out, I think I put it out 30 minutes in advance. So hopefully it captured whoever wanted to see how I do these and, and they can have their questions answered. Ooh, that's gumming up good. You get down to these uh, really high grit sandpapers, it uh, tends to really gum up fast. Now that's a thousand. Let me uh, rub my hand over this and try to get all the good, good stuff off of there, all the grit. And that right there, that's a thousand grit. It looks pretty uniform. Looks nice and shiny. Looks really good. Let me get a little bit more light on this. I actually have a bigger light that uh, will probably help out with this video. More light is always better in my opinion. 
know if that's any better or not. But it should give it a little shine. Take me another drink of water. All right, so that's a thousand grit. I think we're going to stick with the theme of going up 500 grit, and I'm going to hit it with some 1500 before I go to 2000. That's a little bit extra step, but uh, I think it'll save us in the long run because once I get to the 3000 mark, that's where I try to really perfect it before I start polishing. Let me wet my pad. Now, like I was saying earlier, this, this A and this M is fading away. <laughs> it's not quite as deep as the rest of the engraving. There's 1,500. You don't see quite the jump from 15 to uh, 1,000 as we saw with the 500 to 1,000. But it's definitely more metallic. Looks like the humidity is going down. We're down to 53, but the temperature actually dropped a little bit. So I'm hoping it actually starts raining and that would cool things off considerably. Looks like I'm gonna have to fill my bottle one more time. So let me leave this little lovely right here as I go fill this sucker up off the water hose. Oops. All right. And I think I just did this. I did this, so let me flip this sucker around. I'll do this area right here. Whee! Chewing on my sandpaper. Those daggone tail burger blades. All right, so that's 1500. I don't think I need two passes with that, but this next time around, I'm not gonna start where the anchor is. I'm gonna start where I just finished. And the reasoning behind that is, obviously the sandpaper cuts best when it's fresh. And the last couple times I've only started up here so I think I'm getting more cut here and less cut down here when the sandpaper gets older. So I'm gonna do the opposite this time. And that might be like over analyzing everything, but you know, that's how my brain works. When I wash a car, I actually wash it as airflow instead of like, you know, swirly. Cause I figure that's how swirls happen. So I'll wash, you know, going with the airflow, just that's how my brain operates with stuff like this. So we're going to go 2,000. Did I just do 2,000? Hold on. Let me see what I had that on there. No, we did 1,000. We did 1,500. So we're going to go 2,000. 
see if I can get this on here at a decent interval. I know why I was starting up here because down here it gets beat up so bad in these blades, but I, I can I think I can see a difference in the amount of shine between the two. So I think I'll get more cut by starting on the bottom first. Those daggone blades. I'm going to try to tilt that up a little bit, which is exactly what you shouldn't do with a rotary polisher. You want to keep it level. But in order for me to get over those blades, I got to give it a little bit of tilt. And you can see it's trying to walk on me while I do that. Hopefully, you can hear me over this machine, or I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> if you can't hear me, please leave a, leave a message in the comments. Oh, there we go. There's somebody with a message. Wilder 6891. Are you going to do that for all the tails? Um, I've already done eight of these. This hopefully is the last one. Uh, in the beginning of the video, I was talking about where, what we're doing with these. We, we have a plaque cut out, and it's the shape of Alabama, because we're in Mobile. And we put this, this is like the highlight thing, right in the, the middle of the tail. And then at the bottom, we put a uh, unit patch and we put a flight suit patch with the parting person's name on it. So they look really good. We only do this for Chiefs though. For E6 and below, we actually paint the tail and we paint it in the shape of Alabama or the, the Alabama flag. It's, it's white and it has the, the two red X's. And those look really good too. But since you know the Chiefs mess is trying to do a little something special for the E7s that leave, so we put a little extra work into it. We make sure that everybody gets something when they leave. The reason we don't do this for everybody, because we thought about doing it for you know every single rank and putting the rank in there, and we thought that'd be really cool. But unfortunately, this takes so long to do. And I'm not even talking about just my polishing. The polishing is one thing, but to cut this out, it, it took several days and we only cut out maybe, I think we cut 12 out and only like eight or nine were actually usable. And this is, this is actually one of the bottom barrel ones because of the M and the A. We're, we're getting towards the nitty and gritty now. So we can't really, it's not logistically possible to do this. Our chief's mess is not real big and there's, there's only a couple of us that actually you know enjoy doing this kind of work so w right now we're just limiting this to to the e7s and above you know i've done a couple senior chief ones uh i haven't done a master chief but you know they look really good and i, I think it's something special you know people have something to hang on their wall when they leave and remember their time at atc really good unit i've enjoyed my time here except for you know it's in mobile which is so hot and uncomfortable All right, that's 2,000 grit. From this point, I'm going to jump it up to 3,000. And 3,000 is my actual last sanding before I start to uh, polish this sucker out. And the funny thing about 3,000, when you get to that grit sandpaper, there's a big difference in the sandpaper you use. And I've bought so many different 3,000 grit sandpapers. And you can buy it fairly cheap. Like the rest of these are pretty cheap. You know, 13 bucks for, I don't know how I many I get, 150, I don't know, something like that. But this is your typical cheap 3,000 grit sandpaper that you get from Amazon. This is McGuire sandpaper. Now, I don't know if you can see that. It almost looks like a, uh, a felt, not felt, uh, a denim type material and this 
is way superior and it's even thick it's way superior to this but these little suckers are sixty dollars fifty dollars for like ten like it's ridiculous how expensive these are and i only had a few of them left and i quit using them and these came in a headlight kit that i bought years and years ago and i didn't want to use them and unfortunately when i use them now the backing comes apart because the glue is so old so I kind of screwed myself in that in that prospect but I'm going to show you today I'm going to use this and I want to do this top and you'll see the difference between using this and using the cheapie so let me throw on the Meguiar's first got that sucker on there All right, there's the Meguiar's 3000 grit. And you can see when you get to 3000 grit, this stuff does not come out. <laughs> it's just so fine. It catches all that crap in there. And that's why I've bought so many 3000 grits is because the, the gum up so fast that I can only do a pass or two. But wow, I mean that, that looks amazing. Let me uh, get a glamour shot of this little, you can see we're starting to get, get some of that fine shine on there. Now when I use the cheap one, I don't know why, but it leaves a dark finish. Like it's no longer mirror, it's no longer glossy like this. It, it, leaves, it, it leaves it looking dark and, and it polishes just fine, but it, it looks crappy when you first see it. You'll see what I'm talking about. So this is the cheap $13 Amazon sandpaper. It doesn't even go as smooth. It's really catching. All right. See, it's like a dull, faded, it's, it's not shiny. And I mean, it, it polishes just fine, but to me that, that just shows the quality of this compared to this. Like that looks worse than the 2000 that we put over here. I mean, that's, that's a big difference to me. So I'll hit, I'll hit this one with the cheap one again and I might actually take that Meguiar's and knock it all one more time. I just can't justify buying $60 worth of sandpaper for, for these going away awards. I mean, I would definitely use those for paint if I had to, to touch up on paint, but I just, for, for these metal going away plaques, I just can't justify it. I think they call those uh, Unigrit. They're from Meguiar's. I know that 
3M makes some too, and theirs are just as, as expensive. I don't really have a lot of experience with 3M's line. Um, I bought I bought one of their regular hand sandpapers one time, and it was 3,000 grit, and I, I would use that to, to really fine tune a headlight when I was doing one of those. But I've never tried their little three inch disc pads. So right now I'm going to hit this on the bottom with that Meguiar's one more time just, just because I hate the way this looks even though I know it will polish up just fine. Just while I'm on the subject, this button here, I hate. This is the worst design that I could think of for a polisher. It's in this weird spot. If, you're, if I was left-handed, I don't know, maybe that would be easier. I, I don't know. It's just not in a good spot. I don't know why they wouldn't put it there or even get crazy with it. Put a trigger on there like every other polisher on the market. But, you know, that's, that's a whole different rant. I mean, you can really see, I don't know if that 720 video is picking it up, but man, it is such a difference using these versus that cheapy stuff. I mean, that's that's got a shine to it. You can see the shine and that's just dull. And I mean, I know from experience that it will polish just fine, but why is it, why has it gotta be so dull like that? I like to visually see it getting better. Oh, I'm losing, losing some of my pad. Yeah, see, I was telling you, these pads are old and that glue's old. And that's the only reason I'm using it on these. I might as well use them or they're just going to get worse. Let me adjust my line here. Uh, my line's a little, a little jacked up for my taste. I don't know if I've done that just putting it up and down here. Throw this back in here. And I will spray this sucker down. Let me see if I can get all that pad off of there. Actually, I'm getting ready to polish this now. So let me hit this with the pressure washer. I'm about to show you something scary, which uh, a lot of you might not like. There it is. So there's my pressure washer. The pressure washer will actually, I guess I don't have to yell, I got a Bluetooth mic. Um, the pressure washer doesn't like hot water. So before I start it, I like to make sure the water's cooled off a little bit and it's burning up out here. This is how you wear your pump out prematurely. If anybody uses one of these cheap, cheapo pressure washers, just a little pro tip for you. That looks nice. I'm gonna flip this towel around. Hopefully I got that back the way it's supposed to be. Let me dry this up a little bit. I know it's going to get wet as I polish, but uh, I want to start out that way. Eh, I would use the pressure washer, but it's too loud. I don't want to use that loud pressure washer. So I'll just kind of towel it off a little bit here. A quick drink of water. 
Now for polishing, I'm going to start out with the rotary. So I'm, I'm going to take off this old sand paper pad and the, the interface pad, which that interface pad has probably seen better days too. It probably is done. And I am going to use one of my old, old pads if I can find it. Whenever a pad is ready for retirement, I usually relegate it to uh, some sort of duty like this. Dirty duty is what I call it. And you see I ain't put no on here because <laughs> I've had this pad forever. But for something like this, it's fine. It doesn't really fit the uh, backing plate I have on here. I have another backing plate. I'm kind of tempted to pull out, but I'm lazy. So I don't feel like changing this backing plate out. As long as it's on there somewhat, yeah, I mean, that's a little, a little wobbly. I don't know. Maybe I should change it out. Yeah, that's good enough. I'll live with it. And this is where I start out using the old mothers. And I believe it or not, when about eight finistrons ago, this was completely full. So I've definitely, I've definitely been doing some polishing. I just usually take my finger and kind of stick it in there. And it's going to get polished all through this stuff. And I've learned the pressure washer will get a lot of it out, but it doesn't get it all out. And then I've tried everything. I've tried chemicals. Um, every chemical I've sprayed on here, even stuff that says it's safe, for aluminum, unfinished aluminum, it leaves chemical staining on it. And I have to polish that out and I start all over. So the best thing for me to do is, and I probably won't put this on video, like I go through this like with a toothpick and a towel and I try to get as much out as possible. And that, that's pretty time consuming. Now since I'm doing this and it's not wet, like when I was doing the sanding, it will get hot. It will get super, super duper hot. So I have to keep the pad moving and I have to be careful with my temperature. This pad's starting to come apart a little bit. It's actually lasted me a lot longer than the other ones. I'm surprised. It might be time for a new pad. Definitely got my use out of it. And I start out with the rotary to try to get as much of the imperfections out as possible. And then to fine tune it I'll use my little Roops dual action and that will keep me from getting rotary swirls because anybody that's ever used a rotary on, on a fine material like this you'll see these little fine swirls and you'll see it on cars a lot because car detailers, uh, dealerships mostly, will just hit a car real fast with a rotary to try to do it really quickly and every time you kind of catch the pad at a certain angle it will leave these little holograms all over the car so if you get a black car and you look at it in the sun, you might see that hologram everywhere. And that's, that's a big mistake. That's something that kind of drives me crazy with uh, discount detailers doing stuff like that. The car, I mean, it will look fine once they put the, um, turn. Once they put the, the wax on it, it's going to look fine. But, and it, it'll look good walking out the door. But as soon as that wax gets out all those cracks and nooks and crannies and stuff, that's when people start seeing, oh, hey, my car looks like crap. Um, and you know, same, same theory with this, same theory with these, these little suckers here. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna pressure wash this, try to blast some of this stuff out. I'll wipe it down, see what I'm looking at, and see if I need to hit it with the rotary one more time or if I can go straight to the dual action. Well, I did a good job there. All right, 
kind of tap it down a little bit some of the water typically I'll take my uh, you can see the water's even beaten on there you see the water beating up on that because the finish is, is just so fine at this point but I'll tap tap some of this water off of here and then I'll take a nice microfiber towel and I'll wipe this down you can see all that stuff coming off of there the towel catches in these little grooves these nooks and crannies and that's what I was telling you before why I can't put a finish on these because whatever medium I use it gets caught in that stuff and it won't come out and then I leave all this material where I don't want it. You can see it's starting to get some good shine there. That's that's what we're looking for. That's what we want to see. So I, I don't really see anything big with this. I'm not going to take every bit of this polish out. Hey, babe. I'm not going to take every bit of that polish off of there just for the fact that I know. Oh, I don't know. Maybe another 30 minutes or so. So I think that at this point, I don't really need to hit that with the rotary again. I think I can actually go to the dual action because that, that looks really good. getting a time check there. I figure I'll probably be done in about 30 minutes. Maybe a little less. I don't know. I'm going to hit that with the rotary and I actually might be able to end the stream with that. Just, just for a reference here. I mean that's it's coming out pretty good. I mean you see the the darkness in the in the anchor and that's the polish in there and that's what's hard to get out um, sometimes I'll I will use the spray and I'll, I'll get all that stuff out because you can get it out using a, a high pH cleaner it will knock that stuff out but then it leaves that residue everywhere like you can see it on there it stains it so I'm gonna actually hit this with my little roots Bigfoot I know that's an oxymoron this is a Roops Bigfoot. And this is a dual action, which means it's got a free spinning wheel. And it only turns because it shakes. And that shaking action makes it turn. And with any dual action, I like to put a little mark on there. Because if you get this off center a little bit, you're not doing anything but vibrating. It just, it just stops and you're not getting any kind of correction or any kind of shine at all. So you want to make sure your technique's correct when you're doing this or that will stop spinning. So let me plug this sucker up. I will switch this pad over. We'll use the same pad. This might be its last Finistron. And let me move this down to where you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully that's in frame. I'll see here in a minute. I got a little delay from what I'm watching. And I'll put a little bit of mothers on there. Get too crazy with it.
One good thing about using a dual action like this, it doesn't get nearly as hot as a rotary. You know, there's pros and cons to it. You're not going to get that uh, hologram action. It's going to take all that out. It just doesn't cut quite as well as a rotary. A rotary is going to cut way faster than that machine. And that's the reason why hack dealerships use the rotary. You know, I hate to say that word, but um, yeah. To me, a, a rotary doesn't really have a place on factory paint. But, you know, I might be in the minority with that because every time I post anything on using a rotary on a car, I get a million people telling me how they've been doing it for years with no problem. Hit this back real quick. When they cut these out, they had to put these strips of tape on the back. And it, it took me a whole day just to get all the tape off the back of these suckers. So every once in a while, I'll still see some tape. And it's like little residue that comes on there. It's like we're creeping up on 84 minutes. Wow. This has turned into a super, super long demonstration. But like I said, this, this was a process that used to take me two hours before I found that different sandpaper. So it's still got residue on it. You can see it coming off of there. And this is part of the polishing. You want to make sure that your microfiber is nice and clean. I've actually tried to touch these up after we put them into the uh, plaques and the microfiber would have a little piece of dirt or dust or something on them and it would scratch it. This scratch is so easy. When you get it just this, this perfection, this level, it's really easy to damage. Let me uh, get the rest of this off of here. I'm not going to actually film cleaning all of this stuff because that's just tedious and that's probably boring and most people watching this just kind of want to see the metal itself get polished and not the detailing of, of nooks and crannies like that so let me just get a good glamour shot here maybe a little something for a thumbnail when I put this video on I'm trying to see if I see anything obvious there's a little bit of a little bit of sandpaper holograms I see but it's definitely not bad. It's not worth hitting it again. When I first started doing this, every time I saw any type of little imperfection at all, I would, I would break out the sandpaper and, and basically start over. I will not be doing that this time. That was part of the reason why these were taking us so long to complete. I mean, I would be ecstatic to get something like this as an end of tour award. So let me see if I can get a, a glamour shot here. I can use this for a thumbnail, but man, you can, you can definitely see the difference here. Let me get a smile. All right, that should work. That will be the thumbnail once I clean all this gunk out of here. But this is what it starts out as, just, just bare aluminum. And just a mere 86 minutes later, you get this beautiful, gorgeous shine. So that is my tutorial on how to polish metal, aluminum specifically. You can put this to use for uh, you know tires and stuff. I've seen people actually do this on wheels. I attempted to do this on some wheels when I was younger and it was a long process. 
not something I suggest at all, but something like this where it's easy to work and you actually can use a machine, you can get some really good results depending on what you're trying to do. So that's the rest of my video. I appreciate everybody that stopped by. Uh, if, if you enjoyed this video, this kind of format, please drop me a comment, drop me a like, let me know um, what I'm thinking about doing in the future is to actually set up a camera in my garage and when people s drop their cars off to have them detailed, they can tune in, they can see what I'm doing. I might even get like a little GoPro, something on my head where I'm in there, you know, doing the nooks and crannies and stuff like that then it might be a really informative format. Um, I don't know of any detailers on YouTube that do that. Most YouTube videos are 15 minutes long and they go from a filthy, nasty car to a beautiful car in that 15 minutes. There's a lot of steps in between that, you know, that takes a lot of time. So if that's something you'd like to see, let me know. And I, I can definitely start making that happen. Uh, for now, I'm going to sign off. I appreciate everybody stopped by. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this in video. See ya.